As we mentioned a few minutes ago, Haiti is on a brink of becoming a failed state. A gangland rebellion is ripping through the republic. The prime minister has announced he will step down once a transitional presidential council is in place. But will the gang leaders at the heart of the fighting reject that plan, continuing to put Haitians at the center of the crisis? The human toll, hunger, violence and unrest has been unthinkable. Our Matt Rivers, who's been reporting on conditions there now for years, takes us back to Haiti to see that toll firsthand. <laughs> Haiti is collapsing. The country has been ravaged by two weeks of chaos, of bloodshed, of intense fighting and horrific human suffering with no obvious way out. Port-au-Prince is no stranger to gang violence, but an unholy alliance has emerged between the most powerful armed groups, now unified behind this man, Jimmy Chercier, a.k.a. Barbecue. And that first step, now done. The unelected prime minister, Ariel Henry, resigned on Monday after agreeing to a transitional government. Henri now out after weeks of horrific violence led by Barbecue, Haiti's most notorious gang leader. He and his soldiers have launched massive coordinated assaults around Port-au-Prince for nearly two weeks. Dozens of police stations, many destroyed. Gang members even showing off stolen body armor. Constant assaults at the airport forced it to shut down too. <laughs> But the people he says he's trying to free, ordinary Haitians, are being decimated by the fighting. The violence has paralyzed Port-au-Prince, a hellscape now cut off from the outside world. Hospitals around the city show the human toll. In this major hospital, no doctors or nurses can even make it to work to help the patients. Gangs have barricaded off entire sections of the city to slow down police, attacking those who dare cross. Haiti was struggling before this crisis broke out, among the worst hunger crises in the world. This crisis existed before. There were 1.6 million people in Port-au-Prince who didn't have enough to eat. Before this crisis, this is making things worse. Things are so bad in Port-au-Prince, even the director of the World Food Program for Haiti can't get in. He spoke to us from Cap Haitien, a city in the north. This warehouse full of food that people in Port-au-Prince could certainly use, but even if WFP wanted to send it, they can't. The capital city is blocked. There's no way in and out that's safe. With the port now being closed, uh, the, the, the real risk is that the 1.6 million people in Port-au-Prince were acutely food insecure could tip into famine. This is one of the most extreme situations I've ever seen as an aid worker. Dozens of gang members and nearly a half dozen police have been killed in the fighting, while thousands of citizens have been forced to flee from their homes. Over the weekend, the U.S. evacuated non-essential embassy personnel in the night choppering in Marines to reinforce the embassy. The State Department urging Americans to leave. Haitians, though, have nowhere else to go. It all led to this week, a series of emergency meetings in Jamaica with Haitian stakeholders, regional leaders, and even the U.S. Secretary of State. Henri resigns, and now in his place, a soon-to-be-set-up council of seven people who collectively will act as Haiti's president. The question, is that enough to stop the violence? Haiti has long been in decline. Bonjour. Bonjour. I've been there many times in the last few years, including last year, as farmers struggled to sell their produce amongst gang rule. Mais je ne je dis pas, il y a pas même un grain de pas vendre. 
Countless others went hungry, forced to eat mud pies, a mixture of mud, salt, and butter. No one wants to eat this. Yeah, but if you're starving, you, you got to. So what now? How does the violence end? In the short term, Barbecue says it's simple. Take that with a grain of salt. Barbecue is also a disgraced former policeman. Accused of planning a 2018 massacre that killed dozens, sanctioned by the U.S. and the U.N. His gangs have terrorized this country for years with murders, kidnappings, and extortion, taking advantage of a political vacuum. But a ceasefire in any form would be welcome relief. That's what Caribbean leaders, joined by Secretary of State Antony Blinken, have been aiming toward this week, with a series of meetings designed to somehow ease Henri out of power. The joint proposal that was developed by CARICOM and all of the Haitian stakeholders to expedite a political transition. That political transition is taking place this week. But who exactly takes over and when new elections will take place, still unclear. And with that, fears that the fighting could go on. Change does seem necessary. Our thanks to Matt for that. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.